All right, so in example nine, uh, I think what I want to do is kind of show you um, a different way of proving an identity than we have in, in all the previous examples. So, um, you know, so I actually said there were kind of three ways you could approach these. You could make the left side turn into the right side. You could start with the right side and turn that into the left side. Or the other way to do it is to independently work on the left side and right side until you get them equal to the same thing. Okay, so I'm not moving stuff from side to side. That's important. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm not multiplying both sides by things. All I'm doing is I'm manipulating the left and manipulating the right separately. So in fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a dividing line, right? So this is the left hand side is equal to the secant of b minus the cosine of b and then my right hand side is equal to the tangent of b times the sine of b and so basically we're just going to do stuff separately to these to make them simpler right so like how about this one over the cosine of b, right? Let's write all of our sines and cosines, uh, or excuse me, write, let's write everything in terms of sines and cosines. Now we can still keep an eye on where we stand in each of these sides. So for example, as I'm trying to think of what to do next here, I notice that on the right hand side, I only have one term. So that might encourage me to go about getting these combined into a single term. And we know to do that, we've got to have a least common denominator, which in this case is just the cosine of b. So I've got 1 over the cosine of b minus the cosine squared b over the cosine of b. Okay, and then over here, I think uh, it would be good to turn this into sine squared b, right? Just kind of get it all collapsed down. And so on the left side, I have 1 minus the cosine squared of b over the cosine of b. All right, which is different than what I have over here, but look, we now have the same denominator. The numerators are different, but hopefully at this point we recognize, oh, that's right. This is just the equivalence that we get when we take the Pythagorean identity and move the cosine to the other side. So I'd recognize that sine squared of b is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of b. So the moment that I show that both of these are equal to the same thing, that means they must in fact be equal. So the key here is I worked on them independently though and then show that they both ended up in the same place.